you may have noticed a number of similarities between complex numbers on the one hand and scaling rotation matrices on the other hand. It is even better. In a certain sense, they are really the same thing. You can view a scaling rotation matrix as a representation of a complex number. Interesting from a theoretical viewpoint, but also useful from a practical perspective. Because you are probably much more familiar to complex numbers and their formulas than to scaling rotation matrices. Now you can use the formulas you already know for complex numbers and convert them to their scaling rotation counterpart. This makes it a lot easier to memorize the formulas for a scaling rotation matrix. So let us take a look how this is done. So a complex number, Z, can be written as Z equals A plus BI, A the real part and B the imaginary part, so in terms of the two real numbers A and B. And a scaling rotation matrix, C can be written as AA, B minus B, in terms also of two real numbers A and B. What do we have more? They can both be written in the form uh, of a times 1 plus b times i. So for the complex number z, this is obvious. You have z equals a times 1 plus b times i, where i squared equals minus 1. And for the scaling rotation matrix c, you have something similar. c equals a times identity matrix. So identity matrix plays the role of 1 plus b times j where the J matrix plays the role of the imaginary unit I. Because if you compute J squared, you get minus I minus 1, just as the counterpart for the complex number. And there's more. You can write a complex number Z in its polar form. And then you uh, know A equals R cosine theta and B equals R sine theta. So here we have the polar form of a complex number Z. And uh, you can write, do something similar uh, exactly the same for the scaling rotation matrix C. You just write A equals R cosine theta and B equals R sine theta. So there you have your scaling rotation matrix C. And if we make the picture over here, uh, we have our complex number Z. We can write it in the complex plane. Real part of Z A, imaginary part of Z B. Then we have our Z equals A plus B I. Uh, the angle theta and the uh, norm R. Then we have A is the real part of Z, B is the imaginary part of Z, R is the norm of Z, which is a scaling factor of the scaling rotation matrix, and theta is the argument of Z, and where theta is then the um, angle of the scaling rotation matrix. And we have even more similarities in sum and products. You can prove that yourself. If you associate Z1 to one scaling rotation matrix and Z2 to another scaling rotation matrix, then of course you can compute Z1 plus Z2, use some complex number. You can compute C1 plus C2, gives you another scaling rotation matrix. And a complex number uh, Z1 plus Z2 uh, is the, uh, associated to the scaling rotation matrix C1 plus C2. And similarly, you can compute the product z1 times z2. Easiest is to do this in polar form. Uh, and then the, 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 the norm of z1 times z2 becomes r1 times r2. And the argument of uh, z1 times z2 becomes the sum of its uh, arguments. And that is associated to the product of c1 and c2. Because if you do two consecutive scaling rotation matrices uh, after each other, then the uh, resulting scaling is R1 times R2. First you scale with R1 and then with R2. And the resulting scaling angle, first you rotate over theta1 and then over theta2, is the sum of the two angles. So the complex number Z1 times Z2 is associated to the scaling rotation matrix C1 times Z2, C2. So again, a similarity between complex numbers on the one hand and scaling rotation matrices on the other hand. And there's more. We have, for example, the formula of de Mavre. You may know it for uh, complex numbers. Z to the power n. What do you do? Uh, you write Z in polar form. And Z to the power n then is R to the power n times cosine n theta plus I times sine n theta. 
and for scaling rotation matrices, you have a similar formula. Because what, what happens if you do the same scaling rotation matrix n times? You scale by factor r and again by r and again by r. So you scale n times by factor r. So you scale by r to the power n. And you rotate over theta 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, n times. So uh, you get a rotation matrix with an uh, angle n theta. So we have a de Mavre formula for complex numbers and a very similar one uh, for scaling rotation matrices. So you can convert these two. And uh, finally, we have the Euler formula for complex numbers, e to the power zt. So what do you have then? You get e to the power at cos bt plus i times sine bt. That's the Euler formula for complex numbers. And we have seen the matrix exponential function e to the power ct, uh, which is very similar. Then you have e to the power at i times cosine bt plus j times sine bt. So a very easy formula to memorize the matrix exponential for a C matrix is to use uh, the um, Euler formula for complex numbers and convert it. And that uh, is an easy way to memorize e to the power ct to use the similarity between complex numbers on the one hand and C matrices on the other hand.